EFF. Thank you, House Chair. The EFF is outraged by the state of public infrastructure in the city of Tswane under eight years of Democratic Alliance governance, which finally ended under Celia Spring. The DA's removal has revealed a neglected city plagued by abandoned buildings, sewage spillage, and rampant illegal dumping, which threatens the lives of Tswane residents, especially the poor. Under the DA's leadership, Shuber Park and Kruger Park have deteriorated into drug dens and criminal havens with no plan to convert them into low-cost housing or student accommodation, both of which are urgently needed in the city. Mamelodi Township became a garbage dump, while Soshanguvi and Atrejville turned into zones of unresolved murders and violent crime. Amid this decay, the DA administration entered into a racist agreement with AfriForum, granting them access to critical municipal infrastructure without a democratic mandate. The DA enabled AfriForum to provide services exclusively in white areas, including grass cutting and racially segregated security, and empowered them to use force against land occupation protests. The EFF is pleased that this racist alliance has ended and urged the new coalition to repurpose Schubert Park and Kruger Park for housing and immediately revoke any agreements with AfriForum. The racist AfriForum and DA must take their racism away from China's governance. I thank you, Chair. The IFP. Thank you, Honorable House Chairperson. The Inkaja Freedom Party notes with great concern the pervasive drinking culture in South Africa. South Africa's relationship with alcohol is widely recognized as problematic. The IFP believes that there, is, there has been a cultural shift from drinking alcohol as a recreational activity to functional drinking. This is evident in the popular names for drinking associated with each weekday. Alcohol is deeply ingrained in our sense of being, even featuring prominently at funerals, where after tears gatherings involve drinking to celebrate the life of a deceased loved one. Beneath this tradition lies a serious and troubling drinking problem in our country. What constitute fun has been socially re-engineered to be incomplete without alcohol. The Enyobeni tragedy serves as a reminder that social influence is often overshadows compliance, as even a 13-year-old had viewed alcohol as a primary requirement to having fun. The drinking culture is detrimental, as the consequences of alcohol misuse are extensive. It contributes to a rise in car accidents resulting in injuries and fatalities and exacerbates gender-based violence and crime. As the IFP, we believe that the issue must be addressed nationally. We should look at why the drinking habits... Thank you, Honourable Member. Worse. Unfortunately, I your time you. has expired. The ANC... Uh, thank you, House Chair. As, as the ANC recognise, as members in uniform, the Army have a massive responsibility in safeguarding the lives of our people and protecting our borders. So it is very encouraging to also see the outreach projects in the community recently in Colossus Junior Secondary School in Duichwa was chosen as a beneficiary of the South African Army annual community outreach program because the Army wanted to make a meaningful and visible difference in uh, vulnerable places. The refurbishment of the school was estimated to be more than 3 million, included renovated classrooms, a library, a kitchen, ablution facilities, and computer lab, improved accessibility features, and a repainting. The ANC believes that the investment made in the refurbishing the school was also an investment in the future of society. What is, is especially noteworthy is that whilst the army had skills and competency, it could not work alone and had relied on individuals and business communities for sponsorship. We had given generously through us the cause, royalty and local government authorities, as the representatives of the people and landowners had been consulted. Such collaborative work must be commended especially as the school has a rich history and now with the refurbishment, we hope that it can restore to, a former, to its former glory. I thank you, Chair.
Thank you, the DI. Chair, we still have an unemployment insurance fund and a compensation fund under the umbrella of the Department of Employment and Labor that have failed South Africans in every single sphere. The Auditor General has condemned both these entities and the public trying to access these entities have had no response whatsoever. Both these entities collect monies from the workers of South Africa and invest these monies on behalf of the workers into the Public Investment Corporation. However, many of these investments go into unlisted investment companies. In particular, the Compensation Fund has had disastrous investment results. In assessing a snapshot view as of March 24 of the investment, it shows that hundreds of millions of rands have given absolutely no return and many of the investments have resulted in the capital being completely destroyed. A list of these denuded investments in the unlisted investees has been provided to the Portfolio Committee of Employment and Labor. The DA reacts with shock at this revelation. The Democratic Alliance calls upon the Labor Minister to assess the situation carefully so as to ensure that the workers of South Africa are able to recoup some of the monies that have been squandered. Furthermore, the Democratic Alliance calls upon the Labor Ministry to treat the workers' money with more respect and greater vigilance. Thank you. Thank you. The PIC. Uh, may I just rise? I indicated that the PAC will not be making a statement, but the PA will be making a statement. Thank you. I indicated to the chair. Okay, my apologies. Then there was some uh, miscommunication that reached me. May I then now recognize the PA? Thank you, House Chairperson. I'm improvising. South Africa has a revolving door when it comes to immigration. Illegal foreigners are deported today and back again tomorrow. Deported using our taxpayers' money, 20,000 of them deported at a cost of 52 million rand, or 100 Nigerians at a cost of 3 million rand. The same South African citizens who pay tax and vet have to deal with the same spaza shops that sell expired food and food that they manufacture. One, only when a child dies or a child falls ill do we act. And then we want to talk about bringing in different departments to deal with the issue. Why are the departments of home affairs, health, employment and labor not monitoring these foreign-owned spaza shops regularly as they should? Last week we heard that foreign shops are part of the 30% who do not pay tax and we have no way of tracing them. And to add insult to injury, South Africans have to wait for years to get assistance from Home Affairs for IDs and passports. Incorrect information that is printed. A female is listed as a male. Or worse, a mother can't register a child because an illegal foreigner has stolen her identity. But yet we want to fast track Zimbabwe exemption permits and also Ukrainian visas. When are we going to fast track our own people? I thank you. Thank you. The ANC. Thank you, House Chair. The South Africa's inflation rate cooled to 3.8% in September from 4.8 from 4.4 in August. This is in line with expectations of economists polled by Bloomberg, and inflation is now below 4% for the first time in three years. It's also second consecutive month where inflation came in below 4.5%, the midpoint of the Reserve Bank's key target rate. Following September's cut, another reduction of 25 basis points is expected, which will reduce the prime rate to 7.75. Cheaper fuel also helped to cool inflation, with petrol and diesel prices lower to levels last seen in 2023. Oil has been under pressure amid concerns about demand in a weaker global economy. According to Stats SA, the decrease was mainly thanks to transport inflation in that, uh, transport inflation that keeps decreasing, whilst food inflation reminded 
remained unchanged. Prices increased on average by 0.1% between August and September 2024. Fuel prices decreased for a fourth successive month and are on average 9.0 lower than a year ago. Price increases for vehicles also slowed and the annual rate was 3.6% in September 2024, down from Thank the you, Honourable Member. Your time has now expired. September 2023. The MK. Honourable Speaker, the recent move to grant visa-free access for Ukrainian officials by the DA-led coalition with the ANC government is more than a policy shift. It's a betrayal of South Africa's long-standing principle of non-alignment and solidarity with the oppressed. As President Jacob Zuma said, South Africa's sovereignty cannot be compromised for the agendas of the West. And yet here we are, with the DA minister not only aligning us with NATO interests, but also flinging open our borders to dual passport holders from Israel, a nation we have taken to the International Court of Justice for violations of international law. The DA's alignment with NATO is glaring. Over 75% of DA representatives have publicly expressed support for Western positions on global conflicts, including in Ukraine, and voted in favor of pro-NATO policies. Meanwhile, the ANC under President Ramaphosa claims allegiance to BRICS, an alliance which together represents over 40% of the global population and is our largest trading partners. Contrast this with the DA leader's condemnation of BRICS policies, despite the fact that BRICS countries, including Russia, which alone accounts for over $2 billion in annual trade with South Africa, this DA-ANC-led coalition government under the guise of unity is destabilizing South Africa's role in BRICS and betraying our partnerships with nations that stood beside us in our own liberation struggle. MK demands to know if the ANC now stands with the DA's Western-aligned foreign policy or with the BRICS alliance, which supports a peaceful, multipolar world. The time has come to prioritize the true interests of our people, uphold our commitments to BRICS, and end this coalition that threatens the South African sovereignty. MK will not stand by as our foreign policy is organized auctioned off to the highest Western bidder. Wazam Konto. The EFF. Eh, ngibonga che. Nila le, le ntude ni ngang pendude. Eh, njenge EFF usizwa okulu kumangala. Ugubona abantu bagiti, e South Africa special abamnyama. Injele abatritu angayo kulelizu abatelabo. Ngo 1996, kwa vela uchelo RTP, do kwa kela abantu zindu. Lezu zindu abazakayo, o one room, aguna mkwak, aguna ma toilet, aguna gas, Aguna mans. Ogunye, Ogwens Wano Hulume Nweke Bengo. Nazi Daibayanzayo. If you go to Akiwa Inju, Ababwas, Gutiba Tumelo or Savea first. By your peg, Ugutin Fanel, Yini, Leon, Yakiwa Lapona. Ogunya Futaba Wenzin. Manga visitalwa indu wakiwa. Aguko lapa wa tumela kona ma inspector. To make sure guti lendu lanezo wakiwa kona. Awe kona manzi nga panzi. Aliko ini ije itu ala. Enga pazamisa lendu na. Kwa besa kichenji suwa bandu kutike maje. Ngoba imdi enianda. Izindu lezi. Zizo pijizwa. Ikale kwa busha. Honorable member. <laughs> Honorable member, no, your, your time has expired. <laughs> Honorable Mama Kaula. Honorable member. Thank you. The ANC. Thank you very much, House Chair. The African National Congress commends UNISA for achieving an unqualified audit opinion for 2022-23. This marks yet another milestone for the institution, 
which plays a critical role in shaping the intellectual futures of so many students across our country, the continent and beyond. We can say with pride that UNISA is living up to its vision of being Africa's leading open distance learning institution geared towards reclaiming Africa's intellectual futures. UNISA, under the leadership of Professor Puleng Lenkabula as Vice Chancellor and Principal, together with President Thabo Mbeki as the Chancellor, has done very well by consolidating sound financial management. Under the stewardship of the Vice Chancellor, UNISA has managed to increase its investments to 16 billion rand over a period of four years. Prof Lenkabula has catapulted the university onto the global stage by collaborating with multi-tier higher education institutions. The university is the single largest academic institution in South Africa serving over 380,000 students. It has pioneered the implementation and optimization of 10 catalytic niche areas that are a significant investment in the future prosperity and inclusive growth in South Africa and our continent. The ANC also commends the university's investment in the recently launched experimental farm which focuses on becoming a center for teaching, research and community involvement. We also Honorable appeal, member, your time has unfortunately expired. And I want expired. to conclude by saying Bona, Basebenzila, Utabombe Kino Vice Chancellor, Basebenzile. The DA. Thanks, Chair. Public participation is for measuring the impact that it has on society. But the city has ultimately decided on the renaming. Public participation is a mandatory process, but it would have been a decision that has already been taken. Those are the words of the once former mayor of Johannesburg, Councillor Kabela Gormanda, who was asked to resign due to a lack of confidence, and who was recently appointed as the MMC for community development and was subsequently arrested for fraud. With just two hours to the deadline for renaming Santon Drive, a proposal that has faced widespread criticism from the public, and after DA councillors facilitated over 5,500 objections to the planned renaming, Gwamanda announced a city-funded event to meet with only one interested party. He claimed to have gathered 100,000 submissions in support of the renaming despite many being identical, unsigned, unauthored, and lacking key details, details for proper verification. Public, partic public participation is a cornerstone of our Constitution. It is outrageous that certain politicians believe that people have no say in how they are governed and think that they can act without a clear mandate. An independent audit is needed on the renaming process of Sanson Drive which is clearly compromised by an individual already accused of defrauding the people of Johannesburg. The DA will submit this issue to government bodies for investigation. Thank you. Thank you, the ANC. Thank you very much, House Chairperson. Um, as the ANC, we welcome South Africans' filing of the memorial documents at the International Court of Justice to present what we all know is the ongoing genocide of the Palestinian people. Just over a year ago, the apartheid Israeli regime unleashed a vicious and new and updated ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in Gaza. The latest death toll as of today stands at 43,686 people, the majority of whom are women and children. The true death toll, Chairperson, is probably much higher, and hundreds of thousands of people are injured and displaced. We call for the immediate ceasefire. We call for a complete opening of the humanitarian aid, and of course, most importantly, an end to the genocide and to the illegal occupation of Palestine. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Good. I suspect there's no representation from good for a member's statement. Honorable members, that will then conclude member statements. Are there any ministerial responses? Let me firstly go... Minister Montage, Minister Steenhuizen, Minister Schreiber, and then I'll 
take another round. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, members. Uh, I, I just want to object to one thing. Uh, identity crisis can lead to depression. Uh, at this point, MKP is either a bat or a mouse. Then it becomes a pet. You see, asi nonyane, asi tweba. Uh, but it projects itself as a continuation of the ANC legacy. That's why it goes tambo. Uh, as the ANC, we still remain committed to mobilization of all uh, strata and classes in society. Yeah, a confused MKP must develop its identity and refine it. Fortunately, we know the difference and the distinction between a revolutionary and a criminal, a vigilante, or an enemy agent. We know the difference. Point of order, no. Chair. Point of order, Chair. Yeah, I, I see no hand. Honorable members, if you do wish to be recognized, please raise your hand. Honourable Member, why are you rising? Honourable Minister, my apologies. Will you take your seat for a moment? I'm rising to check if it's parliamentary for this member to make an allegation on a criminal when the person was talking. No, Honourable Member, I, I, I didn't understand it that way. I will check the answer and come back. Honourable Minister, please continue. Unfortunately, I'm not insulting anybody. I'm quoting the same Oliver Tambo that MKP quoted. But because they don't know Oliver Tambo, they can't identify with that quotation. They see it as an insult. My last point, Honorable Chair, is the fact that Lega Yokfagin Sikum Kimwasa Ukraine, Lipa Unje Lugu Igabelungu, No Igabelungu, Nibasmil Sangat. Thank you. The next um, minister recognizes the Honorable Steenhuizen. Uh, thank you very much, House Chair. I thought it proper for me to respond to the Honorable Tambo from the EFF because next week he may not be in that party and may have joined the exodus of the rest of the EFF into the Mponto Sizwe party. But let me, just, let me just say this that I'm not surprised that the Honourable Tambo and the EFF don't like public-private partnerships. I'm not surprised they don't like communities standing up and doing things for themselves because their philosophy as a political party is that the big clunking fist of state must do everything for everybody and unless you rise collectively, none shall rise at all. Communities are joining hands, cleaning their neighbourhoods, cleaning their neighbourhoods, and Order, sure honourable members. That things work. And the EFF hate it because they hate to see people doing things for themselves. They hate to see people part of their honourable own. Honourable Minister, please take your they seat for a moment. Honourable Minister. Honourable Mente, why are you rising? Uh, thank you, House Chair. We have raised this matter with you that once the ministers start waffling, you must stop them. And you continue people to be incompetent on the floor. Can they answer the matters that are raised pertaining to service yeah. delivery that oh. are affecting children and women yeah. of this country? Thank you, Honorable Thank Mente. You. I have your point of order. Um, the minister may respond as he wishes. I'm not Thank going you. to prescribe to him as. Thank you very much. They hate to see people doing things for themselves, and they would rather see people languishing in terrible neighborhoods with terrible service delivery than us bringing people together to join together. I then want to respond to the member from MK about the Ukraine. And I agree with the Honorable Mantashe. Clearly, you're learning your history from the wrong places. Don't believe everything that Obaba Kadruduzane tells you. The real Mkonto Sizwe, you would know Joe Medice took them for training in Odessa 
which is in the Ukraine. So please go and understand your history before you come here and pretend to be Mkonto Esizwe when you know nothing about the real Mkonto Esizwe and its contribution in the country. Thank you. The next uh, in line is Minister Schreiber. Thank you very much. Let me add to that uh, very salient point from Minister Stiernazen that as much as a third of the freedom fighters who were trained in the Soviet Union was in Ukraine. And then there's the suggestion that, no, South Africa must pick a side. We must not be non-aligned. It's clear that what comes out of today's member statement is the political illiteracy of the MK party. Have you ever heard of non-alignment? That is exactly what's happening. I salute our negotiators who have worked on this visa waiver issue, and we will implement the policy of this government. Let me also then say, there is this, this issue of conflating people who break the law, foreign nationals who come into our country, versus those who want to contribute to this country legally through tourism, through investment, and through skills. Chair, we must know that we are able to chew and walk at the same time. We will differentiate between people who break the law and those who can help us achieve the apex priority of the government of national unity, which is to grow the economy and create jobs. That is why we are implementing the measures we're doing at Home Affairs. We are revolutionizing this economy and no one will deter us. On the other side, on the other side of this issue, there are some members of this House who have recently suggested that Home Affairs must stop deporting people who violate South Africa's immigration laws. Can you imagine what will happen to this country if we send a signal and say, no, it's fine, you can violate the law as long as it's immigration law and we'll stop the deportations. We will experience a collapse. Let me tell the EFF directly today, we will not be deterred from enforcing the rule of law. We will intensify it and we will deport those who violate South African law. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The, the last four members to be recognized is Ministers Chakunga and Krisi and Deputy Ministers Nell and Manamela. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll revisit the order. I think Ministers get preference. Minister Toloshe, I'll, I'll recognize you. Minister Chikunga, please proceed. Okay. No, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. We agree with the Honorable Member of the IFP on the issue regarding the abuse of alcohol, which we believe it is a problem. It is responsible for many social ills, including parents giving birth to children with fatal alcohol syndrome, children growing up without proper socialization, alcohol abuse being associated with gender-based violence and femicide. It is also true, research is proving that. People being killed on the roads due to drunken driving, and therefore the list is endless. The consequences of abuse of alcohol are dire. Indeed, as public representatives, religious leadership, traditional leadership, civil society, private sector, and every one of us, have a role to ensure that we discourage the abuse of alcohol. And of course, we run campaigns in our churches and everywhere we go in order to remember that every social drinker, in fact, every alcoholic was once a social drinker. And therefore, we don't take things for granted. It is a problem in our country. I thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Krisi. Thank you very much, Honourable House Chair. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member of the ANC for highlighting the arrest and court appearance of the former Transnet Group Capital CEO, because I want to emphasise that corruption is never a victimless crime. Working people and those living under conditions of poverty are most affected when entities such as Transnet and Prasa fail to provide safe, affordable and effective public transport for people and goods because public money has been lost to corrupt practices. Commuters who can no longer use the rail system pay excessive amounts for public transport and miners in the iron ore 
coal and manganese industries are losing their jobs because we are not able to take goods to market on time. We look forward to the wheels of justice turning swiftly in this important matter. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Tolage. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson of the House. Good afternoon to you and Honorable Members. It's just in addition to what Honorable Chikungu has just alluded to, as if the member knew this morning the Cabinet was dealing with the matter and you are on top of it to make sure that South Africans, as we are going through very serious social ills, majority of time informed by the abuse of alcohol and drugs, this is going to come to Parliament for the Parliament's consideration very soon. We are taking this matter very seriously. We thank the member that raised the question. I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Deputy Minister, now. Chairperson, th Chairperson, thank you very, very much. I wish to thank uh, the Honorable Matafa and the Honorable uh, Fasia Hassan for their statements. First of all, yes, we, also, we, we uh, acknowledge the very, very good work being done by the Special Investigating Unit under the leadership of Advocate Andy Motibe. They're working overtime to ensure that we eradicate all forms of fraud, corruption, and state capture. Since the start of the seventh administration, the Department of Justice has forwarded 41 SIU proclamations to the President for consideration. 20 of those have been approved and published, 13 are, have been approved or, and are awaiting publication, and eight are being uh, considered. It's a clear indication that we are serious about eliminating corruption, bringing those responsible to account, and recovering the people's money from those who have stolen it. Secondly, um, Honorable Member Hassan, yes, we have the South African government has filed its memorial with the International uh, Court of Justice. We will be continuing with that case and intensifying our actions in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Furthermore, we are also doing work on the front of the International Criminal Court to bring those responsible for genocide to account. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Members, that concludes the seven opportunities for ministerial responses. My apologies to Honourable Manamela, who was always also uh, willing to respond.